Hi, I'm Radek, I'm a developer advocate at QuickNote, and in this video I will walk you through the upcoming Ethereum Shanghai upgrade. You will learn why it is a big deal, what is changing with details, what to expect as the result of the changes, and what's in the next planned upgrade after Shanghai. Ready? Let's go! Shanghai upgrade is scheduled for March. It's the most significant upgrade to the Ethereum network since the merge. So what is the Shanghai hard fork? And why is it a significant update to the network? If you want to read about it rather than watch it, there's an article on QuickNote blog with all the links. The link to the article is in the description. There are multiple EIPs in this upgrade, but what is an EIP? EIP is an Ethereum improvement proposal which defines standards for proposing new features or processes for Ethereum. So developers propose new features and then Ethereum community reviews and approves them before being added to the network. This upgrade has multiple EIPs being implemented in one hard fork and let's go one by one through all of them. The most important and the most anticipated change in the Shanghai hard fork is EIP 4895. This EIP will allow to unstake previously staked ETH and to withdraw it from the network. Since the merge, one of the top priorities for Ethereum core developers has been enabling the ability to withdraw staked ETH. The merge moved Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake, but unstaking still needed more work, so it was moved to the near future and that was the top priority and the near future is now it's happening in march currently there's more than 16.4 million ETH deposited in the beacon deposit contract which is the staking contract and it's valued at today's prices at almost 27 billion dollars let's have a look at the transactions here 32 Ether each and every transaction. So this is how much you can stake. You cannot stake less and you can only stake more by staking the multiples of 32 Ether. And if you're considering staking either now or after Shanghai, I will have a detailed video with step-by-step instructions on how to do that. So subscribe to QuickNote channel and you will get that video soon. Now let's head to the analytics tab to see what's happening in the contract. So staking has started at some point in November 2020 and it's been growing ever since. Blue is the ETH account balance. Black is ETH value at that point in time. So at the moment there is 16.3 million ETH staked and almost 26 billion dollars worth of ETH. So that's what at stake here, pun intended. And by the way, if you want to learn how to use and utilize Etherscan to its fullest potential, I also have a video about it. It's one of the most popular videos on our channel. So people find value, people learn a lot from it. So just click the link there if you want to use Etherscan for more than just checking the transaction status. Okay, so what are the possible effects of releasing that much ETH into the market and adding that much liquidity to the market? At the moment, there is more than 14% of all Ethereum tokens that are being staked. That's a lot. Not all of that will be unlocked immediately. It will happen gradually over time, over a few months, but still there will be a significant liquidity added to the market. What does that mean for the market? On the one hand, more people will be able to unstake and sell their holdings. But on the other hand, staking on ETH may become more attractive to others due to its improved liquidity. With unstaking possible, those who may have wanted to stake before but didn't because of the lockup period or because of the centralized staking protocols, which people were afraid to use. Now they can be involved in the market. Now they can stake. So there will be both increased supply and increased demand for ETH. Another key component here is decentralization. So up till now, there were staking pools, centralized staking pools that 
if you didn't have 32 ETH, you could stake less and there were public centralized staking pools, which create more centralization than decentralization. With withdrawals enabled, more users will be able to stake themselves and that will add to the decentralization of the network and that will add to the security of the network at the same time. Okay, EIP 4895 is the most impactful EIP that was approved for Shanghai upgrade, but there are additional EIPs Quite a few of them that will also be added and one of them is eip 6059 which deprecates self-destruct this is an interesting one self-destruct is the opcode that allows to destruct the smart contract and get some of the fees back for freeing up some space on blockchain that's how it worked up till now this eip is now deprecating self-destruct so it will still work, but it will warn about its use. And currently there is no replacement for self-destruct, but its use is highly discouraged. So why was it there and why is it now deprecated? Initially, it was introduced to be able to free up some space on blockchain so that it doesn't become too bloated. But for quite some time now, everybody have known that Ethereum core developers want to get rid of self-destruct because they don't want the ability for smart contracts to wipe themselves off of blockchain entirely. Interestingly enough, they still don't know how to turn that off. So that's the first step that they are warning you that don't use that. It will not exist in the future. We still don't know how, we still don't know when, but it will not be there. So be warned. The problem here is that some smart contracts right now have self-destruct in their logic and at some point in time there will be no self-destruct available. So this will violate the assumptions that the smart contracts were deployed with. And Ethereum core developers are closely studying what damage could be caused by this and how to handle this. So that's EIP 6049. EIP 3651 is all about lower gas costs for reward transfer calls. It will make it less expensive to access the Coinbase address. Coinbase in this case has nothing to do with the exchange. It refers to the address that received the rewards and fees for producing the block. And EIP 3651 will change it so that the Coinbase is treated as a warm access and will be easier to access, resulting in lower gas fees for reward transfer calls. EIP 3860 will limit the max size of init code. The max size of init code will now be 49k152 and it's double the maximum smart contract size. So init code is the code that creates the bytecode that is stored on chain. It includes constructor logic and constructor parameters of a smart contract. And this EAP will ensure fair gas calculation of init code and simplify EVM engines to minimize failure risks. EIP 3855 will introduce a new instruction push zero and it pushes zero to the stack when called in the contract code. Interestingly enough, there was no push zero. It was like push one up to push 32, but no push zero and many instructions expect offset as input to the instruction. And in many cases that offset was zero. So there was a need to have a zero to push to stack, which wasn't available. And many different means were used to achieve that, costing additional gas and deployment time. And sometimes these were used in a very weird way. So right now it will be an easy push zero that everybody will be able to use and gas savings and simplification as a result. Now let's talk about important dates. When will the Ethereum Shanghai fork take place? It's most likely to happen in March. The date was agreed at the beginning of January and the date still stands. It wasn't postponed, so it most likely will happen sometime in March. Ethereum developers have already released a Shanghai public testnet on February 1st called Zhejiang. That's a withdrawal testnet. It provides stakers and staking companies the opportunity to experiment and stress test the software prior to launch. So you can start playing with it. 
you can go to Zhejiang Launchpad Ethereum.org and become a validator or unstake and see if and how that works. Now let's talk about what happens after Shanghai hard fork. First, if you're already using QuickNote, you don't need to worry about anything. You don't need to do anything. Everything is being taken care for you on our end and your service will not be interrupted in any way. As for wider ecosystem effects, the Shanghai hard fork is expected to increase interest in Ethereum staking as it will introduce a mechanism to withdraw funds resulting in significant liquidity. And the next step after that, a very important one and very significant for scalability in the Ethereum roadmap is EIP 4844, which is the first step towards sharding or data sampling. And it's called Proto Dank Sharding, it's EIP 4844. Ethereum's as level one blockchain's long-term plan for huge scalability is to introduce ways to verify huge amounts of data without overloading individual nodes, like a node that you might be running yourself. And EIP 4844, the Proto Dank Sharding, will implement some of the new cryptographic work that's needed to do this and it will provide some intermediate level scaling and in the future Ethereum will build on this to provide massive scalability at Ethereum's base level while contributing to support radical decentralization as well. That will further drive important efforts to scale at level one and as effect uh, on all level twos and all the Ethereum ecosystem. And this wraps up the summary of Ethereum Shanghai upgrade. And now you know why it is a big deal and why it's worth waiting for what comes next. On this happy note, see you soon.